Hi guys and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the module 3482 in this GDX100 Square G-Shock. Now I'm having a bit of a love-hate relationship with this watch, but I'm going to save that for the review. I find it to be pretty lacking as a smart watch because it's slow, it's kind of complicated and yet it's kind of great as a G-Shock because it has this amazing screen. It has some important things to me like the sunrise sunset data and the interval timers. So on one hand I love it and because I believe this is the true successor to the G7800 that I reviewed on my channel and it's still one of the my, my one of my favorite square G-Shocks. But like I said as a smartwatch as something that Casio wanted people to use as an activity tracker it's kind of lacking, but I'm gonna save that for the review. So let's dive into this module. Now this being the new generation of these smart G-Shocks, naturally Casio had to change something. So if you're used to using G-Shocks, regular G-Shocks like the Squares, the 6900s and everything, this is used a bit different. And it's kind of giving me problems because I have so much I, I wouldn't call it muscle memory in using those watches that I'd sometimes mess things up because you know it's a G-Shock and I start using buttons the way I'm used to but this is slightly different. Now this is the home screen and in the home screen you can change the layout of the screen as you want. You have this which I call old people screen and I actually love it because this makes it one of the best and most easily readable negative screens out there. Now if you press this button, the a display button, it's gonna change to the activity tracker showing you how many steps you made but still you, have, you can see the time here. Then you have this which is the distance for each day. Then you have this world time screen where you have the world time here and your local time here or home time and you go back to this. Then you have this other button, this one right here that also cycles through the tide and uh, sunrise sunset screen so you can have this which is my most useful screen it shows the age of the moon or the moon phase it shows the sunset the sunrise then you have this tide graph data showing you when again you have the sunrise and sunset and it shows you when the high tide is gonna be then you have the more advanced tide function where you can see the high tide of the day the low tide of the day and again back to this now to go back to that home screen or the simple layout, you always press this button. So no matter where you are in this screen, pressing this is gonna take you back to what you selected here. So if by using this button, I select the step tracker and I go using this button to some tide graph, when I press this, it's gonna go back to the step tracker. So here again, you have to press to go back to that big old people screen. Now, if you press this start button, the watch is going to activate your running timer. So pressing it in the home screen, it's going to go to the stopwatch, which also measures the distance using your phone. And then you press to start it. Once you want to stop it, you press it again. It's going to stop it and the watch is going to ask you whether you want to resume your training. You want to save the data or delete the data. And now this is where this watch is kind of different because uh, using once you get into these menus, this is always used to confirm something. So this like is like an enter. This is like an escape or back key where, where you don't want something. And using these, you cycle with this little arrow to select what you want. So I want to delete this data. I go to delete and press the enter button or the confirm button. And this is what I'm show what, what I'm telling you when I say that I have a bit of a love-hate relation. Look how slow it is to go back once I stop this running timer. Now this is really unacceptable. Now using this button when you're not in those menus when this is used to cycle up and down with values you can go through the modes. So like I said this is the running mode, this changes the screens and this cycles through basic modes. So this is the countdown timer. Pressing it again goes to the stopwatch, pressing it again goes to the activity tracker and pressing it again goes to the notification screen. Another cool feature but not really well made because whenever I get a notification you get it on the screen but you cannot enter into it to see what what's happening. You have to cycle all the way to the notification screen and then select with enter to see the notification which is pretty bad. It also doesn't show the whole email or let's say if it's an email it just shows a portion, portion of it and then you have to go on to the phone and check it out. Let's go back to this. Now to initially set this watch up, the easiest way to do it is to install the app on the phone, do the pairing process 
and that's it. But sadly, even that is more complicated than I'm used to. First of all, Casio is not using the app that I'm used to, which was the G-Shock Connected app. So once you go into the Play Store, let me just zoom in a bit. So let's say I go to the Play Store and that's the first mistake I made when I got this watch. You type in G-Shock and the first thing that the, wa the phone offers or the app is the G-Shock Connected, which is something I've used on Edifice watches, on G-Shock watches, and I actually love this app because this app is fast, responsive, makes everything simple. But no, you have to use the G-Shock Move app. Now the G-Shock Move app is kind of a work in progress. It's pretty slow. It requires you to open a Casio ID, which was also pretty bad and pretty tiresome, and it was very slow. Then once I opened that account, logging into the app, once I started, it took about 10 minutes because it kept getting these error codes until it finally managed to do it. Once I finally did it, the app itself, although it makes some settings pretty easy, is very slow. So if I go to the countdown timer, Look, you always get this get this spinning screen. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. And whenever you ch look at this, this is really unacceptable. And this is a brand new phone that really works well with all the other apps. But you have to use the app if you want to use the GPS, if you want to use the notifications. And also because this watch sets the time automatically via the phone. So it becomes accurate as an atomic watch. But you don't have to use the app. But like so with some things, it's better to use the app because this watch sadly doesn't have the speed scrolling function with the buttons. So setting some of the timers, alarms, or even your year, birth year, when you're use, uh, doing your profile data can really take some time and is very annoying on the watch. But enough about ranting, so forget the app. I mean... You can use it, you'll probably know how to use it, but it's just slow, it's not what I expected. I like that back, uh, the old one, the G-Shock connected a lot better. But let's get back to the module itself. So if you don't want to use the app, you can set up the watch initially by yourself by pressing and holding the adjust button in the adjust screen. So you press and hold. So as you can see in this screen, you also have some of the functions that were not visible when you cycled with the mode button like the world time, the alarm, and some other functions. And to get to those functions, now again, when you have this arrow, these two buttons are used to go up and down, while this one is used to enter that setting, and this one is used to return. So to get into the alarm, you simply select the alarm and press enter. And this is now the alarm. To go back, you press the back button, which is this one here. Now to initially set the watch, you go to the home time, and you press enter and here you have to select your city home city and I already selected Zagreb again look cycling through them can be pretty tiresome because there is no speed scrolling function once you selected that you confirm so let's confirm Zagreb yes and look everything is pretty slow then the DST setting whether you want it auto off or on now auto can be set only if you pair the watch to the phone otherwise you can just cycle it off or on let's go back let's go back another step let's go to the time adjustment so press the enter and again you can do it via Bluetooth which is using the phone or you can do it manually by simply going back going down to manual and pressing the enter and now this is how you set up the time the alarms the countdown timers everything once you see this line under a number it means you can change the values using these two buttons so you change the value to this and once you want to change the minutes you simply press this and the watch is going to jump to the next value which is the minutes so now i change the minutes pressing it again the watch jumps to 2020 which is the year so you can go up you can go down so it's pretty much like casio watches but only reverse because this side changes the values and this one cycles through the values go to the month again i'll just mess things up and you can change the date. Pressing it again, the watch doesn't cycle back to the beginning, but it asks you whether you want return to setting the time, whether you want to save this or not save. If you don't want to save it, you go no and confirm. That's it. Selecting the 12 or 24 hour display, again, you go to that, press, and now you can select whether you want an AM PM indicator or the military time. I prefer this one, so we're gonna leave it like that. Go back, go back. And that's pretty much it. When it comes to the world time, you go to the world time, enter, 
and you again select the city you want. Again, this is pretty bad using these buttons and this is one of the things that's better done through the app. Once you select the city, you press it and it's gonna be the one displayed once you're in the world time function. Let's go back. Let's go to the alarm. Now, to, set the, to enter the alarm, you press this. To set any of these alarms, you go to the alarm that you want to set. So let's say I want to set this first alarm. You press the enter button and the watch is going to ask you, it's going to turn it on as an on alarm. Whether If you want to have it as an on or snooze. Now with this, as you can see, you change how you want it to be. Off, on or snooze. So where the arrow is, that's what the alarm is turned on for. So if you want it to, for on, you select that arrow, move that hyphen here, and now, then pressing this, it's going to turn it on and move to the next value, which is the hours. Once on the hours, using these two buttons, you can again go up, you can go down, and once you select the hour when, it, when you want it to ring, you move to the minutes by pressing this. So now it's the minutes. And again, since this doesn't have the speed scrolling, this is pretty bad. Once you've selected that and pressing it again, the watch is going to ask you whether you want to save the setting or not. So in this case, we want to save it, we press it, and setting complete. Now we just uh, set the first alarm at 2257. I want to set the second, again, I move to the second one, enter, and again, everything is the same. I want a snooze alarm, I go to snooze, so then it's going to ring, and once it stops, it's going to ring again and again, until you actually manually turn it off here. So snooze, I want this one to be at 4.05 4 a.m. I selected the hours, I'm moving to the minutes. Oh, 5, 4.05, save, yes. And this is how you set up the alarm. Let's go back. Next one is the tide and moon. Here you can use the, the, the app or you can use whatever you want. You can have a user custom and here you select whichever one you set up in the, in the app. Or you can enter things manually, but again, high tide is not a problem. You just enter the hours using these two buttons. So let's say I want the high tide is at 350. You check your tide uh, maps for your area. And that's it. Okay, but when you want to set up the location, you have to find out your latitude and longitude. And again, setting this is pretty bad because you can see with these two buttons, you change whether it's north or south. Once you're ready to change the value, move here. And again, this is pretty tiresome because there is no speed scrolling. So this is another setting better done through the app. But if you want to do it manually, use these two buttons. Once you get to whatever latitude you are to go to the longitude, you press this. Now you, you choose east or south with this buttons. Go to the value. And again, using these two buttons, you change it. Save and exit. In my case, no, because I just messed up my location. No. Uh, time difference. This is how you want to be... I mean, user time for the tide graph, how, what location is for your tide. So this is UTC plus one because that is my location. Let's go back. No, I do not want to save. And the DST. Off, on, no. This is all, all for user one and then you have user two and user three. This is all for, for the, how do you call it, for the tide and moon. Now you have the profile and here you enter your data, height, weight, sex, birthday and wrist, whether you wear it on the left or right, to make the step counter as accurate as possible. Height, weight, again, you press this and then it asks you for your height. You use these two buttons when you want to get the weight, press this, weight and you exit. Yes, no, yes, if you want to save it. Sex, again, enter, male, female. So you get the picture. It's pretty easy. Now this one is not easy because if you want to change the year to, I don't know, I believe it starts in 1995 or something like that and you have to go to 1984 or something like that, it's pretty bad. Again, because it's so slow. One, two, and you select yes, no. So now you pretty much understand how this works. Wrist again, you select left or right and that's pretty much it. Let's go back. 
Then you have the beep, whether you want the watch to beep for operation and notification. If you don't want the sounds, the, the buttons to make the sound, you go into operation and press off. And now the watch is not gonna beep when I'm operating it. As you can see, it's completely silent. Also light, this is where you set the light duration, whether you want the auto light on. So if you put the auto light on, the watch is gonna light up when you tilt it. I don't want that because that drains the battery and this is a regular operated G-Shock, it's not solar. Although this looks like a solar panel, it's not. So you're gonna just drain your battery sooner. And duration you can select one and a half and three seconds. So you select and you confirm with this. Setting complete. And then we have the vibration, whether you want it to vibrate on notifications or when you press the buttons. And then you have the pairing. This is where you go once you install the app and the app tells you to go to pairing. So you go here and you press connect, confirming this, or you can unpair by selecting unpairing and again pressing this. I'm not gonna do that. And the pairing is also pretty slow. I mean, the first time when you do it, it's, I kind of expected it to be faster. Airplane mode, so if you're somewhere where you're not allowed to have uh, the watch emitting any radio waves or Bluetooth, you simply select and turn on the airplane mode. And you have the phone finder, so if you're activated the watch, if it's within the range of the Bluetooth, the phone is gonna ring at the highest volume, the, independently, even if it's set to silent. And you have the units, so you select this, and you have for distance, for calories, for height, for weight, whether you want Imperial or the other ones. And that's pretty much it. So again, I'm not gonna go into all of these because you enter, you change the value, and you confirm yes, no, and that's pretty much it. Then you have the reset all, and I advise you to do this when you receive the watch, especially if it's a used one, so it wipes all the, and do the unpairing in case there's some Bluetooth data stored from a previous phone because those things can make connecting to a new phone slightly harder. Okay, let's go back. And I believe that's pretty much it when it comes to the settings. Yup, once you go to regulatory, that's some information about the watch, and that's pretty much it. That's how you set up the watch initially. Now, to use the countdown timer, you go into the countdown timer, and here, this watch has five consecutive countdown timers, meaning if you set up two of them, once the first one ends, the second one starts. And if you set three of them, once the first one star stops, the second one goes, and then the third one goes. So you can do this up to five times. I mean, up to five different time intervals. And then you can set the auto repeat up to 20 times for those intervals. So this is pretty useful when working out. Now to set up the countdown timer, once you're in the countdown timer, you press and hold the adjust, in, adjust uh, button. And now the watch is gonna ask you for the number of repeats of your interval up to 20. Using these two buttons, you can go one, two, three, or all the way to 20. So let's say we're gonna do a workout with 20 repeats of a certain interval. Once you're happy with the number of repeats, you press the enter button and the watch is gonna ask you for the first which is the first uh, 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 countdown timer, and you can <clears throat> cycle through whichever one you want. So we want this green one. You press the confirm, and it's gonna ask you for the hour, or for the minutes. And this one can be set to 60 minutes in one second increments. So we want this one to be, let's say, 45 seconds. So we're not gonna touch the mi minutes, we're gonna press the enter button, and using this button, we're gonna go to 45. So we wanna do a 45 second workout with a rest time of, let's say, 15 seconds. Once we're completed this one, we press the enter button again, save and exit, yes, once you've completed this one, you press and hold the adjust button to enter the setting again. Now, once you are at the repeat, you press it, and here, now you're selecting which one you wanna set up. So now we wanna set up the timer number two, which is this one, and we wanna set it to 15. So press enter again, skip the minutes, and once we're at the seconds, we're gonna increase it to 15. So now we have two timers, one 45 seconds followed by a 15 second rest that's gonna repeat for 20 times. Once we're completed, we get press this, save, yes, and this is now the setting complete. To start the countdown timer, you simply press this button, which is the start button, once you're not in the 
adjusting screen. And now as you can see, it's gonna tell us how long the whole workout is gonna last. It shows you the current time. And over here, we can see that currently we're counting down from 45. Once it reaches zero, it's gonna beep and it's gonna start the 15 second countdown timer. Once that reaches zero, it's gonna uh, beep again and restart this one, the 45 one, and it's gonna do it for 20 times. So this is a pretty useful function and Honestly, these interval timers are some of the most useful functions ever and the best to me when it comes to G-Shocks. To stop it, before it reaches zero, you press this, and to reset, you press this. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the countdown timer. The stopwatch is pretty simple. So you can start it, you can stop it, and you can reset it. Now, I haven't tried if it can do lap times and split times, but I believe it can because in the app you can set up the number of laps and everything. So it should work like this. If I start it like this, if I pre press this, it says lap. So naturally it can do it. Pressing this, this is now the split time. So the countdown, uh, the stopwatch is running in the background. And once we unscre unfreeze the screen, it's just gonna continue. So this means that you can do the first and second plays if you have two runners. Once the first one goes through the finish line, you press the lower button. Once the second one goes through the finish line, you press the upper button. And now you can see the first time, the second time, and reset. Once you set the lap time as a lap timer, not a split timer, it should jump back to zero every time when you start, when you press this button. But this, like, as you can see, it measures down to one second. So it's not really as useful as those uh, stopwatches in older G-Shocks that can measure down to one one hundredth of a second. But what can you do? And as usual, you can see the current time here. Pressing the mode button again goes to the activity. Again, this, if you're not gonna use the the app is not really that useful. And notification screen where if you want to check a certain notification, you simply press this and it's going to list them all like this. Gmail and all that. So if this is a Gmail, you press it and look, someone is asking for a review of a watch, but it doesn't show the whole email. By using these two buttons, you can go down and then it just stops and that's it. So notifications really not that useful, especially since if you want to use them. So I turned it off so it doesn't uh, bother me when I'm doing this tutorial, but let's say you have a notification jumping right here, but no matter what button you press, it's just gonna disappear. And then to check it out, you have to go into the notification screen, which is the last screen of the menu, and then press this to see it. So that's pretty annoying. They should have left at least one button to be able to activate so you can jump into the notifications right away. But that's what, what I'm saying that this watch as a smartwatch is not really that good because having a smartwatch that doesn't have a touch sensitive screen really doesn't make sense. Now go back to the home screen and that's pretty much it. When it comes to those advanced functions, the VO2 Max and all that, this sadly doesn't have them because it doesn't have the heart rate sensor. In that case, you want the GBDH 1000 that I reviewed recently. And when it comes to more advanced functions like the tide function, everything, it's better to use the app. But like I said, if you want to use it as a regular watch, this is an amazing G-Shock just because of the screen, the countdown timers, and the sunrise and sunset data. Those are things that are important to me and I really love it. And the design is just amazing. But I'll leave that for the review. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope I helped you guys figure this thing out, especially if you're, if like me, you're used to older G-Shocks because this thing really confused the hell out of me because I kept using these buttons instead of these and all that, which got things complicated and pretty annoying. But I'm starting to like this watch, like I said, as a G-Shock and I'm thinking about making it a permanent giveaway gift for you guys. But let me know in the comment section if you would like that or if you'd like another watch. Anyways, that's it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.